With 2023 closing out with Plant Zoo's Eurasia Animal Pack adding in eight animals of the Eurasian supercontinent, let's look towards the future as one year has come by and another is about to begin. So, many people think that this is the last DLC. I don't think that, so we're going to speculate on 2024 and what the packs for that year could entail and potentially 2025 if Frontier wanted to push it just one more. So the reason why I don't think this the Eurasia Animal Pack is the last DLC as Frontier's most successful games have usually gone out with a bang. So Jurassic World Evolution went out with, well, Return to Jurassic Park. And since then, not many uh, other Frontier games have really gone out. Planet Coaster ended with Ghostbusters, I believe, and then it got, got a console edition. But with Planet Zoo, I can see more coming to, the, to this PC version of the game before a console one is released. So, yeah, let's discuss 2024 and 2025. Beginning with 2024, this is the most likely gear to potentially continue the game. As, yeah, there's still a lot of highly requested animals and major groups that have not been covered yet. So, let's go ahead. See what 2024's ideas are. Our first pack is the Latin America Animal Pack, a pack full of South America's most diverse creatures, namely mostly primates in, in this case. So our first animal is the South America Coatimundi, a relative of the raccoon that is known from the South American continent and one of the most highly requested animals in the game. A common sight in many zoos and an omnivore, so you'll be able to feed on a variety of different food sources. The black howler monkey has had scenery in the game for a long time. A, a particular monkey sign from the base game has been mostly speculated to be a howler monkey, and that seems to be the most likely option. The black and gold howler monkey is the most widespread in captivity and would be the best option, being the most requested of new, the New World's primates. Next best thing is the Joffroy Spider Monkey, a primate that would be able to utilize the brachiation mechanic that is not an ape. It is often regarded as having five limbs with its tail acting as sort of a fifth, being able to be as flexible as an arm or leg. These animals would be great in spicing up the South American treetops, or in this case, the Central American treetops. The Greater Rhea is South America's largest terrestrial bird species and a common sight in interspecies habitats in the South American precincts, often reg regarded as a counterpart of capybaras, giant anteaters, maned wolves, maras, and various other animals such as tapirs too. So this would be a great species to be able to place in habitats full of other South American natives. Another animal is our carnivore of the pack, the ocelot one of South America's most notable felid species and a beautiful one that, at that. Much harder to find than jaguars as, well, these guys come out at night mostly and also not too big, so they are much harder to find. But ocelots are the, are the, highest, the highest requested cat, I would say, in the game as, well, it is another one from South America and the most notable missing from the continent. Some of the Tamanduas are a species of tree-dwelling anteater that also dwells on the ground occasionally. If Plant Zoo wanted to add in climbing mechanics for the Chinese pangolin, the Tamandua could jump onto that train as having a very similar behaviour set to a pangolin, so that could potentially work in its favour. The last habitat animal, or so you would think, is the Patagonian Mara, a unique rodent relative of the Capybara, often seen as sort of a weird animal as it can often look like a deer in some cases and sits like a dog so it has a few weird uh characteristics of it that make it a very unique and interesting addition the last animals of the pack are a selection of mini monkeys that won't be featured in a walkthrough exhibit but instead are a selection of habitat monkeys sharing very similar animations if not the exact same and very similar vocalizations too only having different models to separate them, as the Calatricidae family of tamarins and marmosets is very diverse in the appearance of its species. So I think this would be a very fun addition to add a bunch of primates at once.
Next is the Safari Animal Pack, an opportunity to add many species from the African continent as well as a bit of India, as both areas have a wide variety of safari tours that show you a variety of different species. So our first animal is the secretary bird, the most unique of the raptor family of birds. And yeah, they are the number one most requested animal in the game currently, known for stomping snakes and also are endangered due to habitat loss. Their colourful faces and silver feathers make them a striking addition to any savannah habitat. The hammerdrice baboon is known for its silver fur and its bright red posterior and face. A very iconic baboon species being the most notable and distinct of them all. Though you could count mandrills and geladas as baboons, but they're actually close relatives. Next is the shoebill, a notable species of Africa's wetlands, a rare species in, in, the, in both the wild and, and in captivity for that matter. They have a very intimidating stare. If one glares you down, you feel like you're staring at death itself. Like it looks like it's going to kill you, but it probably wouldn't. But they are a very interesting animal that I would love to see in the game. As they are also rare in captivity, they would be a, quite an enticing pick for Frontier as they've just added the Saiga antelope. So anything's possible at this point. Honey badgers would utilize the wolverine rig and are also the toughest animal in Africa, so only makes sense to include it here. Blackbuck are a notable antelope of India and are a common sight in many safari parks around the world. And yeah, many people would love to see the blackbuck. I think it's the most requested antelope in the game. So yeah, love to see it. African spurred tortoises are the third largest tortoise. We may have just gotten the Herman's tortoise, but the third largest tortoise certainly deserves inclusion. The serval is another small cat of Africa, with its relative, the caracal, also sharing a very similar body plan, only lacking the beautiful spots and stripes. So it could utilize a very similar rig to the caracal and Eurasian lynx, so making it a very plausible clone species, you could say. The Jackson's chameleon is a very iconic species of lizard due to its triceratops appearance and it's also chameleon the most requested nat normal exhibit animal that most people are asking for as we haven't really gotten too many small lizards and chameleons are often quite small and the jackson's chameleon is certainly no exception they'd be a fantastic species to see due to their striking appearance a few alternatives in the antelope department the greater kudu is one of Africa's largest antelope, but it, even though it has beautiful spiraled horns, another antelope kind of surpasses it being the largest in the world, the giant eland. Do let me know which antelope you would prefer in, the, in this kind of pack. Blackbuck, greater kudu, or the giant eland? Leave, it, leave it, your thoughts in the comments down below. Our autumn pack is the coastal animal pack a pack featuring various animals of the coastlines and islands of the world. Our first animal is the iconic Pacific walrus of the Arctic, a very notable member of the pinniped family that a lot of people have requested since Arctic pack itself. And since deep diving was a thing in Planet Zoo with the aquatic pack, the walrus has been near the top of many people's wish list for a long time. So it only makes sense to include it here. Southern sea otters are the heaviest mustelid in the world, Wolverines might be the largest on land, but southern sea otters take the cake as being much heavier than even the giant otter. So they would be a fine addition to the game as the most marine otter you would ever see. The brown pelican made possible with the mute swan, only having different head animations and a head shape, of course. And I mean, a different body plan altogether, really. But given the swan is a waterfowl, the idea of a pelican is no longer so distant and the brown pelican is the most coastal pelican i could think of west indian manatees would be the most challenging animal of this pack as they are fully aquatic are not on land by any stretch of the imagination but i think frontier could do it if they can pull off a, ver a variety of different um, breakthroughs with the animals in the game so i think west indian manatee is a likely pick for this dlc and another bird of this pack is the southern rockhopper penguin, representing one of the last uh, penguin groups that we are currently lacking, the crested penguins, being one that has striking red eyes, yellow crest feathers, and a bright orange beak, hopping up rocks with ease. 
these species would be a great addition to king penguin enclosures as other than the king penguin we don't have any sub-antarctic penguins so the southern rock hopper penguin would be a, a fine addition to go alongside the king green sea turtles are a reptile of the pack now many people say they don't breed in captivity but a, a, i think an aquarium in japan managed to successfully breed two green sea turtles so it is possible and with plant zoo being able to specifically design habitats for specific species as there aren't really many institutions around the world that have dedicated a whole exhibit design to the breeding of sea turtles i think plant zoo can make it happen and our last bird of the pack is the american flamingo a striking bird of the coastlines of central america and a few caribbean islands and yeah these species this species is the most iconic of the flamingos with its bright pink hue it is the flamingo that most people think of when you say flamingo it is just the go-to flamingo that you see in a variety of zoos worldwide so i think it would be a fine addition to this pack coconut crab is the largest of the hermit crabs also known as robber crabs uh yeah they're quite large and i think would make a great addition to a unique exhibit of their own so my idea for like larger exhibit animals is sort of having a large modular exhibit dedicated to the with its design to specific species so coconut crab could have like a beach style and in our next pack you'll see another example however before the last pack of the year there is of course an anniversary and the anniversary animal that i've selected is the african leopard the base game currently lacks a true leopard we do have the snow leopard but they are closely related to tigers fun fact african leopards are a part of the big five of africa and yeah it only makes sense to have at least one true leopard in the base game as they are just that iconic so uh, the last pack of the year is alpine so alpine is made possible as the Eurasia Animal Pack only took away two mountain species, those being the Wolverine and the Tarkin. With a variety of highland animals left over, the Alpine Animal Pack still remains high as a hopeful pack that I would love to see. First down was the Markor, a striking goat from the Western Himalayas that I would love to see, a common sight in many uh, Asian sections of the biggest budget zoos. The gelada is also quite a rare animal in captivity due to Ethiopia's strict exportation laws and would make a great species to see in game with their unique styles of showing off how fearsome they are by flicking up their lips and showing off huge canine teeth as well as their communication and verbalization being the closest in the animal kingdom to human speech. The spectacle bear is by far the Andes most notable species being a great species and one of the last bears that you could really hope for from the from the game there are three bears that have been wanted since well a long time those being the sloth bear that we are getting in the eurasia animal pack the spectacle bear and the north american black bear we'll get to him in a second but the spectacle bear is easily a, a surefire for this pack i was going to include it in latin america but given it's an alpine animal i thought it would, it would be a better fit here to allow room for other species in that latin america animal pack now to the most controversial pick of this pack is the muskox now most people associate the muskox with arctic tundras but they are also found in alpine tundras in a few parts of their range so i feel like with this loophole it's the perfect place to include it the palace's cat is a species from the himalayas and tibetan plateau that I would love to see in the game as they would be able to easily recycle the sand cat rig and be just another small cat that could be a real niche pick for many zoos. The golden pheasant is a beautiful ground fowl species from the forests of China. And yeah, they are that striking. And yeah, I picked them over the Himalayan Manal because yeah, I thought they were just really good animals to see. And our last habitat animal is the rock hyrax. A relative of elephants you might be surprised to know but they inhabit the rocky outcrops of savannas and scrublands in southern africa and all the way up the eastern side of africa to the middle east so they have a quite a widespread range in highland habitats 
And our last animal would also have a unique modular exhibit dedicated to it, the Chinese giant salamander, a critically endangered species of amphibian and the largest amphibian in the world, found in mountain streams and rivers. Now on to the most controversial year, 2025. Will it happen or not? Let's have a look at a few ideas. Now, the first idea would sort of wrap up the primate debate. So a lot of people have really wanted primates in great quantities, but Frontier hasn't really given us frequent primates. So I feel like given it's such a diverse group, why not dedicate a whole pack to it with the primate animal pack? Our first sound was the golden snub-nosed monkey of the forest of China with its distinct blue face and bright orange fur. It would make a fine addition to the game and would be a beautiful species to incorporate into many Asian, Asian precincts. The I.I. is a nocturnal lemur of Madagascar. And yeah, it's very bizarre. It's, just, it's about as bizarre as primates get, as they have long bony fingers on each hand and a very gremlin-like appearance. But they do represent the diversity that primate evolution has gone to. And yeah, they would be a great species to incorporate into a nocturnal park. Uh, nocturnal park nocturnal house i mean next we have the mantle jeriza a african monkey from the forests of eastern africa and with its distinct hanging white fur from its back and tail it would be a great species to see white face sakis as well have a distinct cream face for the males and glossy black fur females have mostly a olive green and gray coloration so there's a bit of sexual dimorphism between them. That way you can tell them apart. I feel like that's cool. And maybe that's one of the reasons that people really want them. They're also a very unique group of South American primates, the Sakis and white-faced Saki being the most widespread in captivity. Common squirrel monkeys are one of the most uh, widespread primates in captivity from South America itself. So squirrel monkeys are often seen in children's zoos and petting zoos, those sort of exhibits and are found worldwide in a variety of zoos. In Australia, we have the black cap squirrel monkey or the Bolivian squirrel monkey specifically. And yeah, many people do want that, but the common squirrel monkey is more popular with the American audience and um, UK audience as well. So I feel like it would be a better pick in this case. Cockerel safakas are one of the most unique primates that can be added to the game as they have a very unique mode of movement as safakas cannot walk, they're so adapted to an arboreal lifestyle that they do not have the ability to walk. Instead, they will hop along the ground. I feel like that would just be so fun to watch. Our last habitat primate is the lion-tailed macaque of India, a very distinct animal with a great silver mane around their face. And yeah, they would be a great species to add to that macaque family, as we currently have only had the Japanese macaque. So I'd love to see another member of this group. And our last exhibit animal is the Pygmy Slow Loris. Despite its size, it could also have a dedicated exhibit um, designed specifically for it. So yeah, I think that would be fun to see the Pygmy Slow Loris in Planet Zoo. Okay, so this is the only scenery pack that I could think of, and it is the Woodland Pack. So the Woodland Pack is completely North America, as I want to include Native American scenery. And I want it to be appropriate and include animals just from North America, as that is where this culture comes from. So I would really like to see animals that are incorporated Native American culture across the continent. So North American black bear is the number one pick of this pack, being the flagship and one of the most notable North American animals currently missing from the game. Alongside it, we find the wapiti or elk. A species with a very distinct call, one that is very iconic, and I know um, Old Country, who has unfortunately um, finished up his YouTube channel, I know he was really looking forward to wanting these two at least. So, Old Country, if you continue to play Planet Zoo, hopefully the American Black Bear and Elk will make it into the game and your dream can come true. Wild Turkey as well is a species that could be incorporated into this pack. And yeah, they have high re re reverence in American culture, not just Native American culture, but America as a whole, as they are the animal of Thanksgiving, a holiday held in America that 
we don't celebrate here in Australia, but I know is quite the tradition over there. So wild turkey would be a great addition as they would have a very cool audio. Um, one of the only marsupials found outside of Australia is the Virginia opossum, one of the most unique animals of North America as it is, I think, North America's only opossum. Although the common opossum, I think, stretches up into North America a little bit. I think the Virginia opossum would just be a very cool species to see in many different woodland parks. And our last animal being an aviary bird, the pileated woodpecker, a species that would create such a good ambience with its drilling into trees. And I think that would be a really cool species to have in the walkthrough exhibit. So, yeah, I've always dreamed of having a woodpecker in that walkthrough exhibit. So I'd love to see specifically the pileated woodpecker as they have such a beautiful pattern. Okay, sort of a animal pack sequel to the woodland pack would be the forest animal pack. So this pack incorporates many animals from the forests of the world. Flagship being the highly requested Goodfellows tree kangaroo, a missed opportunity from the Oceania pack, even in my personal opinion. I love quokkas as much as the next person, but tree kangaroo would have been so much better in my personal opinion. So they are our flagship. Next, we have the Western Capercaillie, a species of grouse from the forests of Europe with a very cool ambience as well that it can bring to the game. Snowshoe hares would be the first lagomorph in the game as we currently don't have any rabbits or hares. And I feel like the snowshoe hare, um, but yeah, it would just be a cool species to see as it would have both a summer coat and a winter coat. Although since Frontier hasn't really done summer and winter coats in the past, I think it might just be the winter coat. Uh, Canadian porcupines, also known as North American porcupines, I only made, made it the Canadian porcupine here because North American prevented the exhibit animal below to fit. So, yeah, I wanted to keep it still in the same style. So North American porcupines, unlike the African crested porcupine, will climb trees and also have much more deadly quills as they have barbs that spur out from the top that will actually hook into the flesh of an attacker, making them incredibly painful to remove. I guess it lets you think twice about messing with a North American porcupine. Our carnivore of the pack is the bobcat, well, at least one of our carnivores, and they are the smallest of the lynx family. And yeah, they're found in a variety of different forests uh, and into Florida as well in, the, in their unique forests. So bobcats, given their range, They'd be one of the most flexible cats to build for, as you could put them in a desert, you could put them on a grassland, you could put them in a temperate forest, a taiga forest, anywhere. You could put them anywhere, really. So they're a very cool species of wild cat that I'd love to see in the game. The cane of the pack is the Japanese raccoon dog, also known as the tanuki, a species highly requested by the community. And I personally, knowing that it would be the only cane to climb trees, I would love to see it. would love to see the tanuki in the game. Our last habitat animal is the short-beaked echidna, one of three monotremes in the world. The others being the platypus that we got in the wetlands animal pack last year, and the long-beaked echidna of, of Papua New Guinea, of which only one exists, exists in captivity. So, yeah. Short-beaked echidna is the best option here, as they are found in the scler sclerophyll forests of Australia. And our exhibit animal for the walkthrough exhibit is the sugar glider, a cute little marsupial of the night found in Australia's eucalyptus forests. And I think that would be really cool to just see hanging out in the walkthrough exhibits. They, like they'd have these little nest boxes and you can just peek in, see them nestled up and sleeping and gliding from uh, platform or tree to tree in the walkthrough exhibit. I think that would just be really cool to watch. Just this little possum glide from point to point. Our anniversary animal pick for this year, well at least 2025, would be the Nile crocodile, the second largest crocodilian in the world behind the, well, behind the salty, and Africa's most notable. We don't have any African crocodilians, so I thought go big or go home and aim for the top. Nile crocodiles would just be perfect to add into Planet Zoo. They're a very cool animal. So, I mean, I'm a sucker for any crocodilian. They're one of my favorite groups of animals, but I would love to see the North 
at North, the Nile crocodile in the game particularly as an adversary animal. Okay, here we go. The one you've all been waiting for. The Avery Pack. So, Jurassic World Evolution had returned to Jurassic Park. Planet Coaster had Ghostbusters. Planet Zoo should just go out with the Avery and end it off on a high. And yeah, this would be a big one. So my idea for the Avery Pack has been sort of representing the DLCs of the past, adding in different groups of birds and using their rigs as sort of clones to be able to create more and more birds just to flesh out the Averys that bit more. So let's begin from the start. Arctic Pack, we have Idas and Puffins. South America, we have Toucans and Macaws. Australia, we have Kookaburras and Cockatoos. For Aquatic Pack, we have Spoonbills and Ibises. For Southeast Asia, we have Hornbills and Miners. For Africa, we have Storks and Guinea Fowls. I put a white stork there because they're actually also found in Africa. For North America, we have Eagles and the Blue Jay. For Europe, we have Falcons and Starlings. Now, I know I used a superb, I, well, not a superb, superb starling, but a species of African starling here because it doesn't have to be specifically from the continent that's supposed to represent because there's more diversity than that. So, yeah. For wetlands, we have ducks and geese of various kinds. For conservation, condors and vultures. For twilight pack, we have owls and night jars. For grasslands, we have gra we have <laughs> grains, no, cranes and finches. So those would be some cool birds. Uh, for tropical, we have pigeons and birds of paradise, so pigeons and doves. So stuff like Nicobar pigeons and crown pigeons, that sort of thing. And the birds of paradise would be fantastic. For arid, we have the greater roadrunner and burrowing owl, the dynamic duo of the Sonoran Desert. For Oceania, we have the lorikeets and cormorants. For Eurasia, we have hoopoes and hawks. And since I was running out of room, for coastal, we have Inca tern and pelicans. And for high, well, alpine, we have ptarmigans and pheasants. Oh boy, I'm going to need to give my voice a break after that. That was a lot of stuff. But if you have any other ideas for the future of Planet Zoo and what packs could be added, do leave your thoughts in the comments below. I will read your ideas and yeah, I, would, I look forward to seeing what you guys think should be Planet Zoo's future. Whether you think Eurasia Animal Pack should be the last one or not, I hope you say no, because I would love to see a lot more of Planet Zoo. You just saw all the animals I mentioned. A lot of them, a lot of people want. So, yeah. Let's keep Planet Zoo going for as long as we can. And anyway, this has been Red Panda Reggie, and I'll see you when the Eurasia Animal Pack releases. Bye-bye.